The days are getting longer and spring is right around the corner, which means I need to start thinking about and planning for all the spring things on the homestead. So we're going to spend some time outside today, some time doing projects inside, and of course a little time in the kitchen making something delicious. We just finished our school day and it is so beautiful out today. It's like in the high 60s. So spring is right around the corner. I can feel it. The days are getting longer. I'm so excited. And yes, we're still here. Baby is still in the belly, but you know, signs of new life all over the farm. I just love it. We'll go out and look in the garden, but my little strawberries are coming up. So that's super exciting. We're finally back in the eggs. And I mean like back in the eggs. Like, we're getting two dozen a day. I'm so, so excited. Let's see. So this is just the last couple of days of eggs. And yeah, that's awesome. That's why I have like a million chickens is to give me this many eggs. So I'm really excited about that. I've got some more chicken news today, some chicken activities we're gonna do today. And then I'm waiting to hear from my mom and dad because they have dairy cattle too. And if you watched a few videos back, I told you that unfortunately my Jersey cows did not actually get bred last spring when we thought they did. So we didn't have winter calves like we planned on having. Meaning I have been out of raw dairy for a long time for several months and it's so sad when you're feeding well i guess our cows are grass fed like they graze in the warmer months and then we feed them hay you know from our property so we're not really like wasting money on them but it's still so frustrating but my mom and dad have a herd of dairy cattle and it's almost calving season so i'm just like waiting on the call because as soon as they start having calves then i get to go over and pick out one or two of their new mama cows bring them over and start milking and their cows are normandies and white parks i've shown you guys them before and they've never been i don't think any of them have been hand milked but that's okay because i know how to do that i know how to break them for hand milking so that's going to be my project i'm going to break my mom and dad's cattle for hand milking um, one or two at a time you know I don't know if I'll switch them out and work my way through the whole herd or how we'll do it but I will have raw dairy soon so like everything is just coming back together we've got the eggs we've got the dairy coming back in here anytime new baby should be joining us anytime and the new baby like I will take a season of postpartum rest for sure and then it's gardening season it's just all the spring things we have a lot of ground to cover today all right very appetizing i've got my scrap pot here usually i just put my kitchen scraps in this oh goodness You've probably seen this on my counter but this little copper pot kitchen scraps go in here and then this gets put into a five gallon bucket on the back porch and my boys or my husband take it and give it to the chickens or the pigs or just whoever. But I don't know where my big five gallon bucket is. So I'm just improvising and using this pot. Um, you know, the nice thing about having chickens, pigs, and dogs is that I don't feel bad when we have, like, you know, we're careful about wasting. I try not to waste, but sometimes I will have like a piece of, bread <laughs> go moldy or something you know the end of a bread a loaf of bread or something and you know the chickens turn that into eggs or the pigs turn it into bacon so you know you just can't complain when your pigs take your scraps and turn it into bacon that is my kind of recycling right there one thing i have learned in my years of homeschooling is to really hit it hard in the winter months and on days when it's not nice outside that way when the days start getting longer and warmer and the kids want to be outside, I can let them because we are pretty far ahead. And so, you know, you can see today they took advantage of the nice weather and uh, got creative with some target practice here. All right, making a little pit stop on my way down to the chickens because I told you guys a couple videos back that we had ordered a freeze dryer and it's here. It just got here today. So it must be very heavy because they couldn't get it up on the porch. I have to wait for my husband to get home because not a chance that I'm gonna be trying this by myself or with one of my kids. But probably between my husband and my boys, we can get this bad boy in the house and I will show you what we got 
and maybe where we're gonna put it. I'm not totally sure where we're gonna put it, so I still have to decide that. This smells awful. Whew, can't wait to dump that. Okay, so, you know, when you have, there, there are pros and cons to free ranging chickens. And we do free range ours because I think the pros outweigh the cons, especially when you have a lot of space like we do, and when you have larger livestock. So the biggest con to free ranging your chickens, uh, that's predators. But we have a Great Pyrenees. Uh, in my opinion, the best livestock guardian dogs. I love Great Pyrenees and he does great. So we like never lose any chickens because of that. And we have larger livestock. So when you have pigs, cows, and just larger animals around, you're less, I say less likely to lose chickens to predators. But if you don't have a dog and your chickens are not in a coop, you're just going to have massacres, like massive massacres that will wipe out your entire flock of chickens. And it's no fun. Trust me, that's how that happened to us. That's why we ended up getting a dog. So anyway, the other potential con to free ranging chickens, uh, you have to search for eggs. So it's like Easter egg hunting every day, pretty much. I actually don't mind it, but we do have to search for eggs. I know all the spots, I know all their stashes. So I'm gonna go dump this and then we are gonna start our hunt for eggs. We're gonna need these eggs because we're doing something with them today. When we first got chickens, I wanted them right up by our house. And so we actually have a little outbuilding right by our house. It's very cute. And I painted it and just made it look so cute. It was adorable. Um, I used to have a blog post on it, I think, but yeah, it was, it was very cute. And then I realized that chickens poop a lot on everything and destroy everything. And so we move them down by all of the other farm animals in a dirty old building. And I like them much better there. So I'm searching for eggs, but not having much luck because the chickens like to lay kind of up high. And at the stage of pregnancy I'm in, I'm just not going to climb. I will leave that to the kids. So I'll let them finish the searching later. So I'm going to take a little break to visit the cows. Our bull that we borrowed from my mom and dad is doing great. Uh, we know that he's bred one so far, um, we've seen him do it, so hopefully he can get the job done with the other one. So while I'm doing all this, kids are playing outside, just enjoying the nice weather. We love being outside on nice days, so once again, that's just uh, such great motivation to stay focused through the winter. We can get a lot done on those really cold, dreary days. Okay, so we're looking at the garden at my strawberries and they're popping up. So strawberries pop up uh, pretty early. And I'm very, very excited for that crop to come in this spring. And you can see here's Kitty who thinks she's a dog. She acts like a dog, like she follows us everywhere. It's, it's pretty crazy, but it's, it's funny. Okay, another con of having chickens, you saw that they will destroy your, or I should say free range chickens. <laughs> They'll destroy your landscaping. So yeah, I need to do something about that. All right, so I'm gonna get my incubator going here. I ordered this incubator from Amazon. It is new to me this year. This is the first time I've used it, so I can't give a review yet. I will give a review <laughs> once I've been through one hatching cycle with it, but I actually, it didn't come with very good directions, so I had to look up another YouTube video on how to set it up, and I will link that as well as this incubator for you guys because it's huge. So, you know, if you want to hatch a lot of eggs like I do, then this is the way to go. I had a small one before, but it was frustrating only being able to hatch a few at a time. I am recording this in February, so it's probably a little bit past time to do my garden planning, but that's okay because this year I am not going to start any seeds inside. So that gives me more time. This will be my, I'm in zone 6B, 6A or B, I can never remember but we have a pretty lengthy growing season. Um, this will be my sixth or seventh year gardening and I'm still learning. I still have so, so much to learn, but I try new things every year. I have done almost exclusively heirloom gardening with heirloom seeds. And for heirloom seeds, you've got to go to Baker Creek, um, rareseeds.com. That's just like the place to go. They have such an amazing, selection of just everything you can imagine and things you couldn't even imagine and that's what I've done in the past but this year two things that I'm doing different well three things the first thing is we're going to go back to a lot of raised bed gardening which I showed you earlier and I'm super excited to get those raised beds set up I cannot wait we'll be doing a little bit of both some in ground some raised bed 
The second thing is I'm not starting anything indoors. And like I said, that's just because we have a really long growing season and we typically have very, very mild winters. I mean, it's unpredictable in, in the Midwest, but you know, you can always cover seedlings if they pop up and then you get like a really late frost. But I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go with it and see how this works not starting seeds inside because I don't have a greenhouse and I don't have a lot of south facing windows. So when I start my seeds indoors, it's honestly just a pain <laughs> and I wanna see how it goes not doing it. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. The third thing is I'm introducing some hybrid seeds into my rotation. This will be new because I've done almost exclusively heirloom gardening, but I follow some gardeners, seasoned gardeners, and their yield from these hybrids is just so amazing. I'm so intrigued. So I've got to give it a try. These are my seeds. Well, most of my seeds, and this is my best seed organizational uh, method that I found yet. This is just like a huge photo album. You get one anywhere or a binder, a three ring binder. I guess that's what it is. But I use these, uh, oh my God, notes, last year's garden planning. I use these little photo sheets. I don't know, you know, I don't even know what they're called, but you put pictures in here, but actually seed packets fit perfectly. So you can just get these on Amazon. I'll link the ones I have. I I guess they're like four by six or something. I don't know, something like that. But little seed packets fit perfectly down in here and I can organize everything. Stays nice and neat. All the tops of my seed packets are taped shut and I keep this like in a cool, the whole binder in a cool dry place when I am storing it. But I have it out now because I need to go through this, see what I have what I need for next year. I know I need a couple things because the hybrid seeds are brand new to me. I don't have any left over, but I honestly shouldn't need much because I, in the past, this is like one of the biggest gardening mistakes is ordering way too many seeds, like way too much. And then you're overwhelmed. You think you have to try to plant everything. I did a lot of that, but I have a lot of seeds. And for me personally, what I have learned is that it's best if I just stick with the staples. So trying to grow more, like a higher volume of foods that we will actually eat regularly. Things like green beans, peas, carrots, potatoes, sweet potatoes, onion, garlic, melons. Um, you saw my strawberry patch out there. I know the kids will obviously, they love strawberries, tomatoes, uh, herbs, things like that that I'm going to use all the time. Oh, and cabbage. Cabbage always has to be on the list so that I can make sauerkraut. But you know, the possibilities are endless with gardening. You can grow so many things, especially when you live in a great gardening zone like I do. But as I said, for me, I've got the kids, we've got summer activities. My kids play ball. Uh, we go swimming in the summer. We do things with friends. We do a lot. We do so much. And I just want to focus on things that we are actually going to eat a lot of, things that I know I can grow in bulk and preserve. So I am going to go through all of my seeds, make my list of what I need, and my master list of what I am growing this year, all the varieties, where I'm getting everything from, and then I'll type something up and share it with you guys. I don't know how I will share it. Maybe it'll be on the blog, maybe just in the description of this video, or on my email list. It will be somewhere. My 2024 gardening list and master seed list will be somewhere for you guys. Keep in mind, these are just things that I like, but my biggest piece of advice is just don't go all in at first and overwhelm yourself. Pick a few things that you know you're going to eat and probably eat a lot of and really learn all about those plants like you know the types of pests that they attract and how to repel them about companion planting with those uh, plants and everything just learn all about maybe like five different things let's say it's your first year gardening maybe like a really good uh, kitchen garden would just be some herbs you could do different herbs and count that as one thing <laughs> onion um, garlic tomato what else? Peppers? I don't know. That's five things. You could learn all about all of those plants and do that for your first year. Master those. And then the next year you could add in like five more. If I could go back, I totally would have done that because I overwhelmed myself so much in the beginning and ended up killing a lot of things. As I said, I'm just organizing everything before I place any seed orders. 
once I get all of this organized and know what I have and what I need, I'm going to get my orders in as soon as possible because things do go out of stock. And that's always a bummer when you want to grow something specific and you can't find it. So I'm going to get all my orders in and I will be prepared to start my seeds when the time comes. Now, I was hoping to get to freeze drying eggs today. I really wanted to do that, but it just didn't happen. So we might do that tomorrow. But I do have one thing that I want to get done in the kitchen today yet. Recently, we made sourdough granola and you all love that so much. So I wanted to make sourdough granola bars for you as well and share that recipe on the blog. It's very, a very similar process, but obviously you want a different texture. You don't want your granola bars to be really chewy or not chewy. I should say you don't want them to be crunchy. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, like clusters you want you do want them to be chewy so this process is a no bake process like we baked our granola if you remember and I'll link that recipe and that video just a couple videos back but this is a no bake recipe you're not going to bake granola bars and as you can see my starter is very active and ready to go but this is technically a discard recipe you do not need to use active starter now I'm gonna show you how I usually do this I usually make a triple batch and put it in a 9 by 13 but when you go to see the recipe on the blog it will be for a single batch of granola bars which makes 12 and that is in a 9 by 9 so I feel like that's the story of my life you watch my videos and I'm making like huge batches of everything and then it's just a small batch on the blog but you know I do that because not everybody is feeding seven people and it's not always practical to make huge batches of everything. So while I have the sourdough starter, brown sugar, coconut oil, maple syrup mixture heating up over there on the stove, I'm just getting everything else ready. And you know, granola bars, it's just like making granola. You really can customize it to your liking. So I'm adding pecans. Um, you saw me add some chocolate chips. Now I will say that just like with granola, if you add your chocolate chips, while everything is still hot, because you could see I just poured that hot, um, you know, like chewy sourdough mixture into here, then the chocolate chips will melt and your granola bars will look like this. I We actually like ours this way, like the chocolate kind of melted into the granola bars. So this is how I make it. I pour my chocolate chips <laughs> into the big bowl and they kind of melt. I'm using parchment paper to press everything down, but a bench scraper works well too. And this is pretty much it. After I press this down, I'll let everything set up in the fridge and they will be good to go. So I went ahead and made a smaller batch, just a single batch of granola bars to show you guys what that looks like. And just like with the uh, granola, you wanna put chocolate chips on last if you're going to add them and just press them in, let them set up in the fridge for an hour or two and then they're good to go. The freeze dryer is in the house and it is completely set up and ready to go. We are going to use it for the first time. This will be my first time using it, so I'm not an expert by any means, but it has been on my wish list for a really long time. I've watched like a crazy amount of videos on these things, so I'm hoping it goes well. We're going to freeze dry some eggs. I've been, oh goodness, adding all of our eggs <laughs> to this big basket for just a couple of days. Our chickens are really picking up with, with laying. So I've got lots of eggs here and I'm gonna try some strawberries and I'm just really excited to see how this process goes and how everything turns out. So even though the freeze dryer is here in the kitchen for now, it is not going to stay here because I've had so many of you share with me that they are incredibly loud. And our bedroom is actually kind of like right off the kitchen. So I don't know if I would want the freeze dryer running for, they can run for like, 20 to 30 hours sometimes. I don't know if I would want it running really, really loud when we're sitting here trying to homeschool or when I'm trying to sleep, but I'll just have to see. Once I fire this thing up and get it going, maybe it won't be as loud as everyone said, but even then, I don't think long-term I want to store it in my kitchen. It takes up a ton of space, and eventually on that wall, I wanna put like a really pretty hutch, but that's gonna cost money and be expensive, so we'll 
put that off for another day. Anyway, the freeze dryer will eventually be moving either to the laundry room, which is here on the main level, or to the basement, just somewhere where it is out of the way, but still accessible. Now there are a few sizes. We went with the medium size and it is still huge and it's very heavy. It is like 225 pounds. So my husband was able to get it in our house and up on the counter. But like I said, it was very, very heavy. My husband's a really, really big guy. So you might want to think about having help if you're thinking about getting a freeze dryer and you wanna get it situated. But other than the size, the setup was actually really easy. Or at least I say that my husband set it up. It took him like 10 minutes and he has not been watching a ton of videos for years like I have. He just flipped through the instructions and was able to set it up really quickly. It's all pretty straightforward and easy to understand. As far as food preservation goes, I have been canning you know both water bath canning and pressure canning for years now we've done that together here on this channel i have tutorials and videos on canning i also have tutorials on storing food long term without a freeze dryer just using um, certain foods you can store for a really long time using mylar bags and oxygen absorbers but i am so excited to add this into our rotation because freeze drying unlike all of the other preservation methods removes about 99% of moisture from food, meaning that it is shelf stable for 20 to 25 years. So I can freeze dry something like these eggs, which will then turn into a powder. I can put them in a jar and then store them in my pantry for years and years and years, which, you know, I don't anticipate needing to store food that long, but I'm more thinking of practical uses like in the winter when my chickens stop laying, which is always such a bummer. You know, sometimes you'll get like a new batch of chicks that continues laying really solidly through the winter, but when it happens, when they stop laying, when you're out of eggs, there's really not much you can do about it. Some chickens don't even respond to like artificial lighting. And I just don't like to use a lot of artificial lighting. So anyway, this is going to be a great way for us to stay in the eggs through the winter. Or, you know, we just had a situation where we thought our cows were bred and they were not. So we dried them up thinking we were going to have new calves like any time. And turns out they're not pregnant. We don't have any milk, so we've been without our own raw milk for several months now, which when you're used to raw milk, that's kind of a tough change to make. But if I would have had this freeze dryer and been freeze drying all of the extra milk that I was getting like last summer, I could have just reconstituted it and we could have had our raw milk all winter, which would have been so nice. But now we have the freeze dryer and there's so, so many things you can do. So like I said, today we're gonna do eggs and strawberries. I'm just gonna walk you through. This is my first time. I'm not an expert by any means, but it looks pretty, straightforward. I don't think I can mess this up too badly. <laughs> and when we're finished with the process, I will reconstitute some eggs. I'll have the kids try some strawberries and we will report back and just let you know how it goes. As far as freeze drying versus dehydrating, um, you know, essentially you're removing a lot more moisture. So with a dehydrator, you are removing anywhere from like 70 to 90% of the moisture from food through a heat process and you can you can actually just leave stuff out in the sun and dehydrate it that way so it's a very simple way to make foods last longer food that has been dehydrated will usually be shelf stable for about a year but with a freeze dryer your food is going to be shelf stable much longer because like i mentioned earlier you are removing 99% of the moisture and it's through a different process. It's through like a vacuum process in extremely cold temperatures. I think it's like negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. A dehydrator is still a wonderful tool to have in the homestead kitchen, but the freeze dryer is really the best as far as just preserving the flavor and the nutritional content and the shelf life. I mean, you really can't beat it. I got two sets of these trays that slide in and out of the shelving on the freeze dryer. That way, if I ever want to just kind of keep things going, especially in the summer when it's harvest season, like if I want to do tomato sauce or something and I've got lots of tomatoes and want to keep rotating trays in and out, then I don't have to wait to wash my next set of trays before I get the next batch going in the freeze dryer. And another thing I should mention is if you freeze your food in the freezer before freeze drying it, it will cut down on the time it takes significantly. So I think if, if you put 
food in there when it's fresh it's not frozen it's going to be like around 24 hours that seems to be the average consensus from everything I've read which we'll find out but when you freeze it you're gonna cut several hours off so I did get the lids too that way my plan well my thought is that you know in the evening I could prepare whatever I'm going to put in the freeze dryer and then put the lids on trays and put these trays in the freezer so that in the morning they I'll take the lids off and whatever I put in the trays let's just go with our tomato example let's just say I have tomato sauce then my fruit tomato sauce is already frozen I will put it in the freeze dryer and it's ready to go it won't take as long and then I will prepare the next batch put it in the other set of trays put the lids on put that in the freezer and then by the evening I could start a second batch let that run overnight and just kind of keep that cycle going so that is my thought I think these things out a lot like I really think these things through because I do so much research before I invest in something or start using something new that's like a big deal like this but anyway I'm hoping this works well so we're gonna go ahead and get started with our eggs I'm not gonna be cycling through I actually don't even have enough eggs to fill up all of the shells in my freeze dryer today that's why we're gonna do eggs and strawberries um this medium freeze dryer these trays i believe you can fit 18 eggs on one tray so i am going to keep track of that <laughs> i'm going to just crack 18 eggs at a time fill one tray and see how that goes i'm just going to wash my eggs you know when i'm storing my eggs to use fresh then I actually just store them at room temperature and I don't wash them if you want to store them at room temp do not wash them <laughs> leave the bloom intact the bloom is the protective layer that's on there from the chicken and it you know helps to keep them good for weeks at room temperature um, if not longer but since I'm going to crack these open I am going to wash them and then make sure that I get the freeze dryer going so the first thing I need to do is make sure that this pressure valve here is uh, perpendicular that it is closed so the vacuum system can work properly and everything can cool down like it should then this is really self-explanatory just gonna hit start um, it's gonna take 15 20 minutes to cool the vacuum chamber before I'm ready to load my trays so I can go ahead and get my eggs ready while that is preparing the vacuum chamber is cooling for the next 15 minutes or so I'm just going to crack my eggs and scramble them all up Get them ready to go into the trays so i did 54 eggs that should fill about three of these trays and then i'll have two trays left still for my strawberries so i need to wash and cut them up i don't know if i can get this all done in the next 15 minutes but we shall see now the freeze dryer is running and i actually don't think it's that loud like it's loud you can hear it you can hear it in the background right now but i was prepared for something just really loud and obnoxious and it's kind of like just a loud white noise machine that you would put like in a toddler's room or something so you know it's not that bad I don't know if we could make it work long term in that space I might consider it but I just don't think we can with what I want to do over there so maybe the laundry room I was thinking the basement when I was thinking it was gonna be like really really loud but this just isn't as loud as I thought so the laundry room is just down that hall there and around the corner it's pretty close to the kitchen that would be so so handy now I just need to figure out how to ask my husband to build this into the laundry room because it would take some work but we'll see if I can butter them up the top of the line truly free range pastured eggs at the store which you know I have my doubts I know that they, they can be tricky with the labeling to make us think that these chickens are like actually out on pasture when they maybe just can see a blade of grass or something but the supposedly really really good eggs at the store are like seven dollars a dozen and I live in the midwest where things I live in the rural midwest where things tend to be cheaper so I just can't imagine how much a dozen really really good eggs cost like on the east and west coast or big cities or whatever but you know this I'm freeze drying four and a half dozen, so that's about 30 bucks worth of eggs. So, you know, if I had this freeze dryer full, I could get about six dozen or so. And if I did that for a few days, then that's, that's a lot of money saved on eggs. All right, so I'm getting my strawberries here. To prepare these, to freeze dry fruit, you want to um, do so in, a, in an even single layer, so don't just pile everything really really high you want to make sure everything gets totally dry 
So I cut my strawberries to be like a quarter, probably less than a quarter inch thin and then spread them on some parchment paper on my trays and even layer so that they don't stick. And as I'm loading trays into the freeze dryer, I'm closing it in between loading different things just so the chamber stays cool. So I put my strawberries in. Now, the easiest way that I have seen to do like a liquid is to load your trays and then pour the liquid into the trays. That way you're not trying to carry full trays of liquid over to your freeze dryer and having it spill and then there's a huge mess. So this was pretty easy. I would use a bowl with like a pouring spout next time. So lesson learned, <laughs> noted on that, that it just took a few seconds. I filled up all three trays. I mean, there's not, I don't have any way to know if there's like exactly 18 eggs in each tray, but I just filled them more or less to the top. And now I'm going to close the freeze dryer and make sure I'm talking to my husband as I'm doing this. <laughs> so, um, close this, make sure that the latch is closed all the way, hit continue and we're good to go. This will be on freeze mode for the next nine hours or so. Okay, it is beeping and it says process complete on the screen. So, so far this has been really easy. The screen has walked me through everything and told me what, what to do. I haven't had to reference the um, instruction manual at all. So now it says I need to open the drain valve and I have, let me show you here, um, just a little pot here. All of the moisture that was removed from the food is going to drain into this pot. Hopefully it's big enough. If not, I'll just switch it out for a five gallon bucket. But that drain valve that we looked at earlier that needed to be closed so that the vacuum system could seal and everything could cool down properly, I need to open that now and we'll see what happens. I'm assuming I should see water start coming out of here. So we'll see. This process did take about 24 hours from start to finish. So everything that I had read and watched was correct for fresh food. Just plan on about 24 hours. So as you can see, I'm wearing something different. We're into the next day and I'm unloading all of my freeze dried food, which is so exciting. Now I did <laughs> kind of misunderstand one thing. I thought that when I turned that valve and I, I had the you know little drain tube hooked up that water would start coming out of the freeze dryer immediately. But I'll show you here in a second that it has to defrost. All of the water is like frozen in a ring around the chamber. And so if I wanted to just load more trays back in here and keep this thing going, it's already cooled. It's already, you know, got that frozen layer there. I guess it would stay really cool. And I would just do that, but I don't have anything I'm going to put in here right at this moment. So look, I'm showing you right now. You can see like the layer of ice <laughs> around the chamber. It says process complete. And I'm going to go ahead and defrost because I am finished for now. So this whole process was so simple. I did not reference the manual once. I just followed the prompts on the screen and was able to understand it and complete the freeze drying process very easily. So I close the door and now we're gonna let this thing defrost. All right, so I tried a strawberry and they're delicious. Um, definitely still has all the flavor. Very light and airy and just not crunchy, not crispy, I don't know. I mean, if you've had freeze dried fruit, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But these things are <laughs> totally dry. I have my windows open, it's windy, and they're like blowing in the wind a little bit. So all I have to do is put these strawberries in a jar or something. I guess if I wanted to store them super long term, I could do mylar bags. But I'm just going to put them in a jar, seal them, and store them in the pantry and I will reconstitute some uh, probably tomorrow because I've got the eggs behind me I'm not gonna try the raw eggs <laughs> but um, I will blend it up into a powder and I'm gonna store it that way so maybe tomorrow morning I will reconstitute some eggs and do a taste test and let you know how everything turned out this is going to save so much freezer space you know we get a lot of produce from our garden and I do can a lot but canning it's time consuming and it's a lot of hands-on time. I love it. I actually do really enjoy it, but it takes time. The alternative is freezing and that takes space. And we use a lot of freezer space for our meat. Now you can freeze dry meat, so maybe we'll get to that at some point. So you see that I just put my strawberries in jars and store them just like that in the pantry. Now I'm adding my um, 
eggs to my blender, I'm just gonna blend them up into a really fine powder so that I can fit more of them into a jar and just, just save more space that way. Now that defrosting process on the freezer jar took about two hours. So, you know, I actually just kind of stepped away and forgot about it. And the next day I went to show you how much water I got out of it and my mic was off. But anyway, it was maybe a gallon of water. You definitely don't need a five gallon bucket to drain your freeze dryer. You know, a couple gallon pot will be just fine. I've got my egg powder here. So two tablespoons of powdered egg plus two tablespoons of water equals one egg. So I usually make about a dozen eggs when I'm scrambling eggs for us for breakfast. So I'm gonna do a cup and a half of this egg powder here and a cup and a half of water. I will add in a little bit of milk. We'll see what it looks like and see how they turn out. You know, the great thing about freeze drying raw eggs like this is that you can use them, you know, any way you would normally use eggs that are scrambled up. Obviously you're not gonna have like fresh fried eggs or whatever, but in baking, which that, man, I'm so excited about that to just have a sure way to have eggs for all of my wintertime baking because that's when I like to do the most baking. But also just, we love scrambled eggs for breakfast. I could eat scrambled eggs every day for breakfast and we do eat them a lot. We also really like hard boiled eggs and fried eggs. We're, we're not too picky, <laughs> we like our eggs. So here's my final product. These are my reconstituted freeze dried eggs that are now scrambled. Moment of truth. So they look like regular scrambled eggs. Um, texture, everything. So I'm gonna give John a bite first. Probably really hot. <laughs> See what you think. Thoughts? Tastes like normal egg. Mm. Yeah. I mean, same. Yeah. Nothing special. Nothing different. Just the same. So. There you have it. We are going to reconstitute some strawberries. I'm gonna try some. So I read that it takes anywhere from like two or three minutes of soaking these in water and that's all you do is just soak um, dried fruit, your freeze dried fruit, just soak it in water. So I read that it takes anywhere from like two or three minutes to 15 to 20. That's a wide range. So we're just gonna watch them and see because a lot of people said that if you let them soak for 15 to 20, they end up very mushy which I don't want mushy strawberries. So we're gonna keep a close eye on these and see what the verdict is. Now, if my kids had their way, I would not reconstitute them at all. They have been loving the freeze dried strawberries as a snack. Okay, so I tried one at three minutes and it still felt maybe a little bit crispy. So then I just tried one again. It's been seven minutes and this is perfect. I feel like if I let them sit longer, then they will be mushy. So we're gonna, Go with like seven minutes or so. But you know, if you wanna experiment, then you can do that. So the texture is a little bit different. It's not exactly like fresh strawberries, but it does still have the flavor. So this is gonna be perfect in my granola. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna make myself a bowl of granola with milk and strawberries. I am so glad we got to bust out the freeze dryer and put it to use in this video. It will be making regular appearances, you know, as we go through the growing season, I am sure. And I'm just, Looking forward to using it for all kinds of different things and taking you all along with me as I do. So I will link the information for this freeze dryer in the description along with everything else that I talked about today and I will see you all next week.